Good morning, everyone. Very warm welcome to Ripon Cathedral on this Trinity Sunday. We're in festal mode this morning as we celebrate the very nature of God. Uh, welcome to those of you who join us online, uh, sharing in this worship with us uh, at home. Good that we're united on this uh, day of celebration. Children's Church happens as usual while we worship here in the nave and the children will join us at the end uh, for a blessing and to share with us uh, what they have been learning. So if we don't understand the mystery of the Trinity now, it'll be fine because at the end the children will enlighten us, I have no doubt. Um, if you're here for the first time uh, this morning, then a special welcome to you and uh, do join us afterwards for coffee. Uh, in the South Transept, a great opportunity to chat and get to know each other, or get to know each other better. So before the service begins, we'll keep silence, remembering in whose name we gather, whom we come to worship on this Trinity Sunday.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning, and I add my welcome to this morning's service, to this service when we celebrate the Holy Trinity. Let us prepare our hearts for worship as we say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. How often have I longed to gather your children as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, says the Lord, but you would not come to me. Let us, as wayward children, return to God and confess our sins. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal, that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. This is the word of the Lord.
the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. <coughs> what is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy, 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 
is the Lord of hosts. Yes, the Prime Minister has called an election. And the media are already full of debate, speculation, and the announcements of a growing number of MPs who are deciding that now is the time to quit. Be honest, were you surprised by the announcements? The timing of it? And what is our reaction to the starting pistol being fired at the commencement of six weeks of campaigning by the parties and their candidates? It is to gather on this sacred ground and to celebrate the wonder, the nature, the mystery of God on this Trinity Sunday. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Yes, today is Trinity Sunday, and so we are very much on sacred, holy ground. Of course, we are always on sacred, holy ground here at Ripon Cathedral, quite literally. Whatever the day of the year, whether festal season, penitential season, or in ordinary time, whether we're baptizing and confirming, celebrating a wedding, mourning and commending the dead, whether in election campaign seasons or in times of political calm and stability, whatever they might be, I just imagine it is within the bounds of possibility, political calm and stability. This is holy ground where prayer has been valid, to quote Eliot, and where the very fabric has been sanctified by the prayers of the faithful. As well, of course, as the prayers of the not-so-faithful, and the seekers, and the doubters, over centuries. Have you ever had one of those experiences when, for a moment, just a fleeting moment, it is as if the veil is pulled back and you glimpse the presence and activity of the living God in your life. Perhaps when you've been in church, perhaps with a special person, perhaps viewing a wonderful scene in the countryside, perhaps listening to a glorious piece of music, but just for a moment. It seems absolutely true beyond any shadow of doubt. God is, and God is with you. It's clear that Isaiah had such an experience, fleetingly. Such an experience can shape our lives, forever. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The prophet Isaiah was in the temple. Years later, he could still remember that experience, when it was the precise moment, the year that King Isaiah died, probably about 636, 736 B.C., he heard the senior heavenly attendant singing and he saw the Lord sitting on a throne, quote, high and lofty. And in this fleeting moment, which would change his life forever, he saw the hem of God's robe filling the temple. Just note, Isaiah didn't see the whole being of God, simply his robe, and not even the whole of the robe, or the majority of the robe, just the hem. And though there was much that remained unseen, which was mystery, that hem alone could fill the whole temple 
and justify the superlative theme, holy, holy, holy. We might have a sense of glimpsing the edge of God's mystery as we celebrate Trinity Sunday. And when we hear those same words sung here, as we do regularly in this sacred space in the middle of the Eucharistic prayer, the Sanctus, the Holy, Holy, Holy. We can take it for granted. We walk into those doors routinely, some of us. We walk back out. We can take it all for granted and fail to see the true nature of it. Just think, as bread and wine are transformed into sacred food, Christ's costly and heavenly gift to us, offered every time the Eucharist is celebrated. We too hear the sound of heavenly singing. The choir of Ripon Cathedral is always heavenly singing. We too are invited to open our eyes to see God's presence with us. And like that bread and wine, we too are enticed to change to be transformed individually and together to become the very body of Christ. But as with Isaiah, this is no escapism for any of us, getting out of the rain for the morning or away from the chores or whatever it might be. Just sort of beautiful, simple, life-enhancing entertainment. Isaiah changed he left the temple with a clear sense of commission, as well as one of his own unworthiness, having been accepted and forgiven by God. Have you noticed how gifted people who approach the very top of their particular profession or field of interest and activity let's say a musician or an academic or a teacher, whatever it might be, how these gifted, high achieving, very able people are often the ones who live with, can even be held back by a strong sense of their own imperfection. It's as if the closer they get to perfection, the more aware they are of their own imperfection. Now this is clearly what was going on with Isaiah, I would suggest. Woe is me. I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Little wonder then that those who perceived the perfect presence of the living God in Jesus Christ needed some assurance, which we hear in this morning's gospel reading. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. And it was divine reassurance of mercy and forgiveness which left Isaiah being able to respond to God's call to speak up for him. Here am I. Send me. Could that be our response this morning? Here in sacred ground, observing sacred acts, listening to the music of heaven, eating the very food of heaven, the bread of heaven. Could we say, here am I, send me? In sermons recently, I seem to have been reciting repeatedly a lamentable catalogue of the world's ills. Well, there are plenty out there to catalogue and to recite, but um, mercy is shown this morning. I'm not going to do that now again. 
But it goes without saying that there is a genuine acceptance that things are not as they should be. Why else will we have political parties and candidates striving to attract our attention, to tell us of their proposals for putting things to right, which is all well and good as a, and as it should be. And it is our duty to listen and to ponder. But how do we ponder? How do we decide whether the aspirations of a particular party or a particular candidate deserve our support or not? Well, how fortunate that the first Sunday of this campaigning period should be Trinity Sunday. When standing on holy ground, we, like Isaiah, glimpse something of the presence and the reality and the nature of God. Hopefully, we too feel a sense of God's forgiveness of our inadequacies, a sense of his commissioning of us to stand up for him, to speak up for him. We must pray for all parliamentary candidates and hope for the election of able people who will succeed in balancing a sense of their own unworthiness with humble confidence. And we must show them mercy by not expecting them to be God. We can reassure them we know that they are not the saviors of the world. If we put them on that pedestal, how can they but fail? As Christians, we can encourage parliamentary candidates and those elected to follow our sincere example of looking to the only one who has been perfect and who, having seen into heaven, revealed the very ways of heaven to the world. As our gospel passage concluded, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The world saved through him. So like Isaiah, let us go out from sacred ground willing to speak up for the ways of the living God. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. <coughs> we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the Almighty God 
Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for mercy and grace. Father of heaven, whose love profound a ransom for our souls has found, we pray for the world created by your love, for its nations and governments. Extend to them your peace, pardoning love, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne. Almighty Son, Incarnate Word, our Prophet, Priest, Redeemer, Lord, we pray for the Church created for your glory, for its ministry to reflect those works of yours. Extend to us your salvation, growth, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death. We pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Thrice holy, Father, Spirit, Son, mysterious Godhead three in one, we pray for ourselves, for your church, for all whom we remember before you. Bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity, as we worship you, saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God, God of power, power and might, might heaven and, and earth are full, full of, your, of glory. your glory. Hosanna, the <clears throat> highest. Amen. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son Jesus Christ who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
by your Holy Spirit, you keep the church in unity and truth. As we break bread together, may we be one with Christ in faith and hope and love, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, all that you reveal of your glory. The same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your holy church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty, and so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, 
his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Peter, St Wilfred and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all our ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory who are three persons yet one God now and forever. Amen. Right. Do we have our children's church? Would you like to come up and tell us what you've been learning about the Trinity today? As they're coming up, we have just one notice. On Thursday at 5.30, we have our festal Eucharist for Corpus Christi, when we celebrate God giving his Holy Communion. So please do come along to that on Thursday evening. Right, so do you want to hold up what you've been doing? Oh, some very interesting things here. So I can see a clover leaf and a dove. Would you like to tell me what you've been writing on your clover leaves? The three leafed clover. Anybody? Tell me what you've been learning about. Can I have a look? So what have we got written, written on here? We have Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and Trinity. So that's what we're thinking about, isn't it? God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, which Trinity means three, doesn't it? Three persons in one God. Wonderful. So hold up so everyone can see what you've been doing. Wonderful. And... This, uh, this is the symbol of the Holy Spirit, is it? Is that why you've done the dove, or is there another reason you did the dove as well? Wonderful. So, do we have a prayer as well to say for today? Yes, are you going to read the prayer for us? We've got two prayers, wonderful. So who's going to say the first one? Right. Okay. Dear Lord, thank you for the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And our second prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for God the Father who loves us and made our wonderful world. And thank you that the Holy Spirit is always with us when we need it. And thank you for Jesus' kindness. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you. So let us stand for our final blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen.
Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>